The Oregon Trail and Westward Expansion, a History Perspectives book by Kristen Marciniak. Chapter 3, Charles Mills, Soldier at Fort Laramie. Charles Mills, Soldier at Fort Laramie. I envy the folks who pass through Fort Laramie where I am stationed. They come through on foot and by wagon so they can start a new life in this unclaimed territory. I've never been farther west than a few miles past Fort Laramie, but once my time here is finished, I'm going home to Iowa to marry Betsy. Then we'll come back to the west to start our new life together. For now though, Fort Laramie is a fine place to be. It's right in the middle of the Oregon Trail, and we also see our fair share of folks headed out to California for gold. Set on the banks of the Laramie and the North Platte rivers, we give people a place to gossip, stock up on supplies, and take a much needed rest during their travels. The fort hasn't always been called Laramie, but it has been a gathering place for adventurous travelers since 1834. That's when the fur traders built a trading post out of old logs and called it Fort William. The log buildings didn't last long, so the fort was rebuilt out of adobe bricks in 1841 and renamed Fort John. Soon the big wagon trains started passing by and the fort became the only place to stock up on supplies for 800 miles. Then the 49ers came. It was gold fever out there in California, and the government decided that the West needed a stronger military presence to protect the travelers. So they bought many of the forts along the trail. They renamed this one Fort Laramie, and the name remains the same today in 1860. Protection is our first job here. We make sure the travelers feel safe on their travels and the trails are clear for wagons and livestock. Settlers can buy supplies like animal feed, tea, flour, and even ammunition. They can have a broken wagon axle fixed or replace a bent wheel. If someone in their party is sick, they can stay for a few days or send messages to folks back home who may be worrying about them. But most folks who stop at the fort just want information about the trail ahead. A lot of people who come through these parts are afraid of the Indians. I've been here for two years and haven't come up against any troubles, but I know there have been some problems in the past. For the most part, the Plains Indians keep their distance from the settlers. We do get reports of stolen horses, and sometimes a tribe will ask a wagon train for payment to cross their land. There's not much we can do about that if we want to keep the peace. The situation with the Indians is delicate. We've been lucky here at Fort Laramie. The last time fighting broke out here was six years ago. It was just a few miles from the fort back in 1854. A cow from a passing wagon train wandered into a Sioux village. The Sioux were hungry and they were waiting for their shipment of supplies from the government. One of the tribesmen killed the cow for meat. People from the wagon train came up to the fort to complain, and Lieutenant Grattan and 28 other soldiers went to arrest the Indian. Things got bad. The chief of the tribe was killed, as were all the Americans. The old timers tell me the relationship between the Indians and the Americans has been rocky ever since. The settlers want to expand the United States westward, and the Indians want the land that was given to them in the treaties. Recently, there's been a lot of fighting over the land near Pikes Peak in the Rocky Mountains. Gold was found in Pikes Peak in 1858, and now miners are crawling all over the place, trespassing on Indian lands. I know it doesn't sound right, me being a soldier and all, but I sometimes feel bad for the Indians. At the end of the day, we all just want to live on this beautiful land. That's what I'm planning to do when my time at the fort is done. I've been stationed here for two years already, and I suppose I'll be here for two more, unless things get worse back east. 
Betsy sent word that states in the South want to secede from our country to start their own. Many people from the North do not want slavery in new lands, while many in the South think it is necessary for their economy. I'll fight for the North if I'm called home, but I hope the sides can settle their differences without bloodshed. This is a great big country, and it keeps getting bigger every day. Surely we can all find space to live our lives the way we want. End of the trail. The Oregon Trail was heavily traveled until 1884 when Union Pacific completed a railroad along the same route. After that, it was much faster and less expensive to travel to the west by rail. The trail was still used to move cattle for many years.